Hello, Nerdy Librarian here, bringing you another bonus content video from my legendary playthrough series of The Elder Scrolls V Skyrim. This is going to be Gone Fish in Episode 6. I mean, last time we were unsuccessful at catching the, the elusive vampire fish in underground fishing locations. Today, I hope it'll be different. Uh, you're all, we're also picking this up at a very interesting time. In the playthrough series, we, uh, under the Imperial Army, have just taken... Windhelm and served Alfred Stormcloak. So what that means is, well, you're, you're catching it at a time when Windhelm is in flames. But regardless, uh, we there's work to be done today. So last time there were a few locations that we had frequented. As part of this, one of those being Lost Knife Hideout, with it having an expansive underground lake that can be fished from. Because, much like all the other fishing locations. Oh! Okay. Sadly, it still has enemies within. I get, with doing quest lines and all of that, uh, enemies have respawned. Unfortunate for me, but we'll make it work as long as I stop missing my shots here. And good news is they tend to get stuck there, so it makes it makes that process a little bit easier. Last time going through that or going through this area, I didn't realize that so readily, so it took way longer than it should have. But this time around, we are good to go. At least where these two are concerned. Up ahead, there are more bandits that I am not as fortunate with, sadly. But a couple of potions here that are just nice for the taking as well. Yeah, so this is the area here with the underground lake that we were attempting to fish at last time, trying to get the vampire fish. And if you remember last time as well, I was having some issues with my laptop with it crashing and that sort of thing, because that's how I do my... I do recordings on a, a gaming laptop. I don't... I'm... I'm not... I don't really have a lot of money, so I can't really afford a gaming PC, if that makes sense. So, I mean, this, this is what I have. But, thankfully, the issue fixed itself. So we are good to go on these videos. I should, so I shouldn't have any issues for the foreseeable future. Yeah, so, and the issue that had been plaguing my laptop for a few days, it was like three or four, it was, what it ended up being, at least what I think it was, was a desynchronization between the charge of the battery and the and the battery sensor like when the computer displays what you know what charge your laptop is at it kept thinking that it was at a hundred percent when in reality it was probably lower than that so it finally caught up to that and worked out all right. Uh, we've got uh, Lady Benox words and philosophy, um, which I this is actually a person that you meet in Elder Scrolls IV: Oblivion, I believe. But um, yeah, let's go ahead and read this. Lady Elena Benox, former master of the Valenwood Fighters Guild, 
and head of the Emperor's personal guard in the Imperial City, has been leading a campaign to reacquaint the soldiers of Tamriel with the sword. I met with her on three different occasions for the purposes of this book. The first time was at our suite in the palace, on the balcony overlooking the gardens below. I was early for the interview, which had taken me nearly six months to arrange, but she gently chided me for not being even earlier. I've had time to put my defenses now, she said, her bright green eyes smiling. Lady Binak is a Bosmer, a wood elf, and like her ancestors took to the bow in her early years. She excelled at the sport, and by the age of fourteen she had joined the hunting party of her tribe as a Jesper, a long-distance shooter. During the black year of 393, when the Parik tribe began their rampage through southeastern Valenwood with the aid of powers from the Somerset Isle, Lady Binak fought the futile battle to keep her tribe's land. I killed someone for the first time when I was sixteen, she said. She says now. I don't remember it very well. He or she was just a blur on the horizon where I aimed my bow. It meant no more to me than shooting animals. Probably killed a hundred people like that during that summer and fall. I didn't really feel like a killer until that winter tide, when I learned that it was like what it was like to look into a man's eyes as he spilled his blood. It was a scout from the Parikh tribe who surprised me while I was on camp watch. We surprised each other, I suppose. I had my bow at my side, and I just panicked, trying to string an arrow when he was half a yard away from me. It was the only thing I knew to do. Of course, he struck first with his blade, and I just fell back in shock. You always remember the mistakes of your first victim. His mistake was assuming because he had drawn blood and I had fallen that I was dead. I rushed at him at the moment he turned from me towards the sleeping camp of my tribesmen. He was caught off guard, and I wrested his blade away from him. I don't know how many times I stabbed at him. By the time I stopped, when the first watch came to relieve me, my arms were black and blue with strain. There was not a solid piece of him left. I would literally cut him into pieces. You see, I had no concept of how to fight, or how much it took to kill a man. Lady Binock, aware of this deficiency in her education, began teaching herself swordsmanship at once. You can't, le you can't learn how to use a sword in Vellinwood, she says, which isn't to say Bosma can't use blades, but we're largely self-taught, as much as it hurt when my tribe found itself homeless. Pushed to the north, it did have one good aspect. It afforded me the opportunity to meet red guards. Studying all manners of weapons wielding under the Studying the manner of weapon wielding under the tutelage of Warde Akor, Lady Benark excelled. She became a freelance adventurer, traveling through the wilds of southern Hammerfell, northern Valenwood, protecting caravans and visiting dignitaries from the various dangers indigenous to the population. Unfortunately, before we were able to pursue her story of her early years any further, Lady Benark was called away on urgent summons from the Emperor. She was often in the cave. Such is often the case with the Imperial Guard, and in these troubled times, perhaps more so than in the past. When I tried to contact her for another talk, her servants informed me that her mistress was in Skyrim, that their mistress was in Skyrim. Another month passed, and when I visited her suite, I was told she was in a high rock. To her credit, Lady Binock actually sought me out for a second interview on Sun's Dusk that year. I was in a tavern in the city called the Blood and Rooster, when I felt her hand on my shoulder. She sat down at the rude table and continued her tale as if it had never been interrupted. She returned to the theme of her days as an adventurer and told me about the first time she ever felt confident with a sword. I owned at that time an enchanted Diagatana, quite a good one, a Daedric medal. It wasn't an original Akaviri, not even of design. I didn't have that kind of money, but it served my primary purpose of delivering as much damage with as little effort on my part as possible. Ekor taught me how to fence, but when faced with the life-or-death situation, I always fell back on the old overhand wallop. A pack of orcs had stolen some gold, gold from a local chieftain in Metedea, and I went looking for them in one of the ubiquitous dungeons that dot the countryside in that region. There were the usual rats and giant spiders, and I was enough of a veteran by then to dispatch them with relative ease. The problem came when I found myself in a pitch-black room, and all around me I heard the grunts of orcs nearing in. I waved my sword around me, connecting with nothing, hearing their footsteps coming from near. 
Somehow, I managed to hold back my fear and to remember the simple exercises Ma Master Akor had taught me. I listened, stepped sideways, swung, twisted, stepped forward, and swung a circle, turned around, sidestepped, swung. My instinct was right. The orcs had gathered in a circle around me, and when I found a light, I saw that they were all dead. That's when I focused on my study of swordplay. I'm, stu I'm stupid enough to require a near-death experience to see the practical purposes, you see. Lady Binox spent the remainder of the interview responding in her typically blunt way to the veracity of the various myths that surrounded her in her career. It was true that she became the master of the Valnwood Fighters Guild after winning a duel with the former master, who was a stooge of the Imperial Battle Mage, the traitor Yegar Tharn. It was not true that she was the one responsible for the Valnwood Guild's disintegration two years later. Actually, the membership in the Valnwood chapter was healthy. But in Tamriel overall, the mood was not conducive for the continued existence of a nonpartisan organization of freelance warriors. It was true that she first came to the Emperor's attention when she defended Queen Akarithi of Sentinel, Sentinel from a Briton assassin. It was not true that the assassin was hired by someone in the High Court of Daggerfall. At least, she says wryly, it was also true that she... At least, she says wryly, that has never been proven. It was also true that she married her former servant, Urkin, after he had been in her service for eleven years. No one knows how to keep my weaponry honed like he does, she says. It's a practical business. I either had to give him a raise or marry him. The only story I asked her that she would never admit nor refute was the one about Klaxus, the Emperor's bastard. When I brought up the name, she shrugged, professing no knowledge of the affair. I pressed on with the details of the story. Klaxus, though not in line for secession, had been given the Archbishop Rock. Arch, Archbishop Rock. That's such a weird word, sorry. Archbishop Rock. Archbishop Rick. Archbishop of the One. A powerful position in the Imperial City and indeed over all Tamarel, where that religion is haunted. Whispering began immediately that Claxus believed that the gods were angered with the secular governments of Tamarel and the Emperor, specifically. It was even said that Claxus advocated full-scale rebellion to establish a theocracy over the Empire. It is certainly true, I pressed on, that the Emperor's relationship with Claxus had become very stormy, and that legislation had been passed to limit the Church's authority. That is, up until the moment when Claxus disappeared, suddenly without notice to his closest of friends. Many, said Lady Binoc, an imperial guard assassinated the Archbishop Claxis in the sacristy of his church. The date usually given was the 29th of Sun's Dusk, 3rd Era, 398. Of course, responds Lady Binoc, with one of her mysterious grins. I don't need to tell you that the imperial guard's position is as protectors of the throne, not assassins. But surely no one is more trusted than the guard for such a sensitive operation, I say carefully. Lady Binaka acknowledges that, but merely says that such details of her duties must remain secret as a matter of imperial security. Unfortunately, her ladyship had to leave early the next morning, as the Emperor had business down south. Of course, I couldn't be told more specifics. She promised to send me word when she, when she returned so we could continue our interview. As it turned out, I had business of my own in the Somerset Isle, Compiling a book in the Sijic order, it was therefore with surprise that I met her ladyship three months later in first hold. We managed to get away from our respective duties to complete our third and final interview on a walk along Desieto, the great river that passes through the royal parks of the city. Steering away from questions of her recent duties and assignments, which I guess rightly she was loath to answer, I returned to the subject of sword fighting. Frander Hunding, she says. Frander Hunding, Hunding, she says. Lists thirty-eight griffs, seven hundred and fifty offensive, and eighteen hundred defensive positions, and nearly nine thousand moves essential to sword mastery. The average hack and slasher knows one grip, which he uses primarily to keep from dropping his blade. He knows one offensive position, facing his target, and one defensive position, fleeing. Of the multitudinous rhythms and inflections of combat, he knows less than one. 
The ways of the warrior were never meant to be the easiest path. The archetype of the idiot fighter is as solidly ingrained as that of the brilliant wizard and the shrewd thief, but it was not always so. The figure of the philosopher swordsman, the blade-wielding artist, are creatures of the past. Together with the sword singer of the Red Guards, who is said to be able to create and wield a blade with but the power of his mind, the future of the intelligent blade wielder looks bleak in comparison to the glories of the past. Not to want, not to wanting to end our interviews on a sour note, I pressed Lady Alana Benach for advice for young blade swingers just beginning their careers. When confronted with a wizard, she said, throwing petals at a canthal leaf in the distal. Close the distance and hit him hard. Interesting. Very interesting. But we have things to do this, this bonus content episode. Well, that sailed over their shoulder. There we go. Also, someone up top here. Let's see what we can do about that. Outlaw, two red dots. But it gets them to move away from the balcony, which is good. I want to have this room as cleared out as possible. Just to make it safe to do any fishing in here. Which, have 55 carry weight, so carry weight is not a concern here. Not this time around. Just have to wait for that person to come back to their post. Uh, I suggest waiting for about an hour. Yep, there they are. Got him. Uh, there's one red dot up there, but looks like they're farther up, so I don't think that's going to be too much of an issue. Just have to lose them. And the fishing supplies are down here. Now, according... Now, for a vampire fish, it a vampire fish is an uncommon fish, as established in last episode. And is a large fish, supposedly. So an Argonian fishing rod is the best case scenario on this, or it's the best rod to use. But once again, it's random number generation. There is really no guarantee of catching a vampire fish, even on the first try. Although that would be fun. Ah, it's a glass catfish. Another one that's on the list that I already have. So let's go ahead and try this again. By uncommon, I wonder what the percentage is on the catch rate or catch ability of, of vampire fish. Also, just pulled up some tongs, so I'm not I'm not too hopeful about this fishing location for some odd reason. Unless it's trying to bamboozle me with pulling up uh, junk. Yeah, because I'm getting nibbles now. It's probably another glass catfish. Yeah, it is. E each fish seems to have its own certain pattern of nibbling. Some quicker, some slower, some two times, some three times. A glass catfish has three nibbles, it looks like. But I digress. Is that another glass catfish? Yes. Huh. Wow. Okay. Seems to be a very common fish. Because I've just... I've caught three glass catfish in a row. I think. I wasn't keeping track that well. Hist Carp. Which is from the base game of Skyrim. Not what I'm looking for. I would really like to get more fishing content than, you know, vampire fish. Oh, I pulled a bucket up. Yay, let's add that to the one that's already floating there, because I'm already carrying two on me that, once again, yes, I'm going to... <sighs> one, drop on, my, on Felix's toes here. Yes, Felix, I just broke your toes with a wooden bucket. That's par for the course, I guess. But, no, like I said, I am going to eventually get around to to recording that video. Four bites, that might be the vampire fish. Scorpion fish. Also, I heard a little, in the background. 
like it was a rare fish of some sort. Yeah, fish worth 30 gold. So that's, that's kind of fun. It's not really what I was looking for. But I'll pull up a, a more expensive fish. That's fine. Okay, and two nibbles. Another nibble. This might be... Uh, it's a tripod spider fish. Another one that's on the list that I already have. That one, you noticed it was kind of two quick nibbles, and then it waited, and then one nibble. So I don't know what a vampire fish's pattern is on nibbling. Okay, that was two nibbles. Oh, hey, we got... Hey, we did it! There's the vampire fish. Nice. Excellent. Worth ten gold. Okay, that's fine. Let's get these back to swims in deep waters. And then we can progress further in fishing in this game, which is excellent. Excellent. We're only 20 minutes into the recording and we've already made progress. I like that. Thank you. This is much better than having a crash happy laptop and not having any luck like last episode was. Because all of those fish that I got from last episode were pretty much, well, okay, the tripod spider fish caught that one by just swimming around to get it and then the dire fish and glass catfish I think I just fished them up normally because they were common underground fish something like that also I have to laugh that arrow goes right through that uh, that store there but you can't actually they don't like it when you go right through the back of their building Oh, you locked your door. I have a key. It's fine. Oh. You have questions? Also, we didn't get around to reading Fishing Mastery Volume 4, which you can see has magically made its way to the shelf here. So let's go ahead and read it. If you ever find yourself staring into the abyss and wondering what you've done with your life, do not fret. It is likely not the void of death that is standing before you, but rather one of Skyrim's many caverns, mines, and other dark places. It is a darkness that, if you're lucky, will be full of water and teeming with fish. But be forewarned. While you may be a seasoned adventurer, only an expert fisherman should attempt to fish these uncharted waters. While they won't kill you, if you fail to catch one, you may just die of embarrassment. And that is a fate far worse. Fortunately, this guidebook will help you avoid having to hear the mocking laughter of fish echoing in your skull. Before we get to the fish... We should first discuss the places one can go that are suitable for fishing in the dark. Brood Cavern in the mountains south of Morthal is well known by hunters as a place of shelter and hungry fish eager to bite your hook. You may have to contend with wild animals that sometimes reside in its cool depths, so pack something sharp to go along with your fishing rod. Embershard Mine, near the sleepy town of Riverwood, is said to be flooded deep within and may be a hidden gem for subterranean fish seekers. It is too bad that bandits and thugs have been seen by many coming and going from its entrance. It may be best to fish elsewhere for now. For the truly brave, chill wind depths south of the Dragon Bridge is rumored to have dark waters that ripple with life. Take care not to venture far from the entrance, as this cave is known to be infested with frostbite spiders. These are only a few of the many deep places one may find a good fishing spot. Those that fancy themselves as explorers will no doubt turn up numerous places to cast the lines underground. Yeah, we went to none of those three locations to catch these fish, but caught them regardless. Uh, here are the fish you asked for. Thank you. Here, this is for you. 400 gold, I yeah. like that. I'm ready for the next fishing challenge. Of course, it's all in this note. I'll return with these rare catches soon. My thanks to you. Oh, rare fish. Okay, uh, list list of rare fish. So it should just say, yeah. You came to us, a novice, and now look at you, a fishing master. None of us, least of all the fish, expected you to come this far. Most of us placed wages that you'd be dead already. Long story short, you only have one more step before becoming a true fishing legend and helping me get out of debt. 
you will need the Argonian rod I gave you earlier, as well as the Alicrir rod from Viria. Here is a list of the rarest catches in all of Skyrim. Angelfish, Angler, Lyretail, Anthias, Scorpionfish. Be sure to read the fifth and final volume of Fishing Master to learn the secrets of their whereabouts, and the rods one must use to catch them. Should you succeed, I have the perfect gift for someone sharp like you to represent your mastery of fishing. It will help you skin your catches as well as the occasional bandits. Best of luck. That sounds like fun. Also, I'm going to point out here, we just caught the scorpion fish. Anytime you hear the sound effect, that means you caught a rare fish. We also have the angler fish. I know that because we caught it at the uh, Windhelm docks a few episodes back. Actually, we caught like three or four of them in a row, which is really surprising, because if they are rare fish... Um, now, granted, I did drop a few fish, but there's the scorpion fish. And there's the angler. We have three of them, like I said. So let's go ahead and read Fishing Mastery Volume 5. Fishing Mastery Volume 5 by Swims in Deep Water. As a master fisherman, you have accomplished almost everything. You have fished in pools where the weather is fair and hooked curious fish that come out for the rain. You have dipped your rods in half-frozen lakes and waters tucked away in bottomless caves. You have fished the breadth of Skyrim from winter hold to fall creep and become an expert of the craft. However, you still have more to learn. The rarest fish cannot be lured with technique alone. One must center themselves and be in tune with the water mentally and spiritually. You also need more specialized rods, not the cheap ones you find at the general goods store. The Nords are excellent craftsmen, but for the rarest, most exquisite, most delectable, most vaingloriously spectacular fish, you must use rods of Alucri and Argonian make. If you have managed to obtain such rods, then you are ready to embark on your final test. Good luck. Okay. So we have two of the fish already, and presumably each of these fish come from a different uh, climate type or different biome type when it comes to fishing. So the angler fish was in that winch was winter fishing with uh, with yeah, it was. Why do I always brain fart on its name? Windhelm. There we go. Wind. Yeah, Windhelm is its name. When we, we caught that at the Windhelm docks, that was in the cold. Um, and then the scorpion fish we just got from underground. So I can only presume that we have to do some fishing while it's raining and in a, temp and in a temperate climate. So... I may have had an angelfish actually earlier in this playthrough, but I think I I think I had to drop it for weight, I think. But you know, if it's fishing in temperate climates that we need to do, such as this, then let's go ahead and do that. The rarest of the rare fish. Ooh, ooh. Okay. Two quick nibbles, slaughterfish. Now, apparently he said the reward for catching all these rare fish, quote-unquote, is something that can help us skin fish or opponents. So, I can only presume that it's going to be a blade of some sort. However, I'm curious to see if it actually does let you skin the fish that you catch and what that does for you oh we've caught junk what have we caught Ooh, an empty wine bottle okay there was a drunkard on the docks last night apparently uh yeah 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 into that boat you go there you go somebody will probably come by and refill it you know they'll just pick it up take it to the nearest tavern and go I'd like this amount of wine, please. Or something like that. Something along those lines. Brook bass. Okay, so we're catching a lot of the common 
the common ferret fish here, which is fine. This is going to take some time, but since they're all above ground fishing locations that we need to go to for this, as far as I know, it should actually make it a little bit easier. Granted, it's just going to be uh, a random number generation nightmare. We have to have to rely on computer generated uh, probabilities of catching these things. It it's like that. Uh, I mean, it's it's a. Um. <laughs> I was not expecting to see that. Um. Yeah. So, yeah, you just, there's an elk that's just swimming across this lake. Swimming through it. It was hilarious because it just wandered onto screen from the left side. Just It was like a little disembodied head for it. Which I, I know better than that. I know it's, I know it's not a disembodied head, but it was slightly creepy actually. It was just like, da 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 da. It just revealed itself. <sighs> it's funny. <laughs> it's just enjoying a nice swim is all, you know? Look at it. Oh, there it goes, there it goes. Bye-bye. Oh, uh, yep, I'm just catching junk at this location now. Ooh, I caught some actual ale. Somebody dropped good alcohol. Hm. Well, it's their loss. I don't think Felix would drink that, however. He's not really the into booze. But we'll switch fishing locations here and continue fishing off the dock. But there should be fish at this spot over here because that other one ran out, obviously. Uh, another carp. That's not cap. That's not cap. It's a carp. Okay. Let's keep going. You can see that just... People wandering around the docks a little bit, guards and the like. Oh, another slaughterfish. Well, at least we're catching catching slaughterfish means we're making it a little bit safer for creatures like the elk to swim around. So we are doing our part here in Skyrim, making the waters safe. I don't know what the catch limit is for Skyrim though. I don't think they have a DNR. They don't. I don't think they have a Department of Natural Resources. Oh, hey, uh, a goldfish. Okay. Well, good. Good to see that a lot of different types of fish are being represented by this, even if it is one of the cheapest, if not the cheapest, fish you can catch. But I digress. Ooh, salmon! It's a fairly good sized fish. Common. Well, it's especially common in colder climates. I don't know about up here. Okay. So it seems like this location has also run out of fish. I uh, just caught an empty wine bottle there, and let's just uh, throw it here and hope none of the guards notice. They'll call that, they'd call that littering. So since that didn't pan out, let's go head down river, or is it up river or down river? Up river. We're going up river. That answers my question there. And let's do a little fishing here. Actually, um, fishing at night as well. I don't know if that's going to play any part in this. Ooh, I don't know if an angel fish is considered a small fish or a large... Ooh. Are you... Really? Okay. And I also have a thought on this. Um... So, anglerfish and scorpionfish might both be large fish as well, whereas angelfish and then 
whatever the fourth one was might be might be smaller fish so that might be the way to do this granted it's not a perfect thing as we catch a salmon there which is a considerably size considerably it's a decently sized fish put it that way it's like you say the word considerably and then you leave yourself hanging because you realize you have just ruined your chances of being able to string a sentence together effectively because of that word. In trying to find the correct word for size of fish following that. Okay. And we caught a juvenile mud crab. Yay us. And another salmon. Well, if the bears don't get them, we will. Uh, nibba, ah, 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 two, nibba, ah, three, ah, 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 ah. Is it a goldfish? Yep. Goldfish are three nibbles. Good to know, good to know. Oh, we're catching junk now. A troll skull. Well, that's just, uh... I mean, that'll make nice decoration for a uh, heartwood mill here, but... Uh, I... Yeah, three and a half carry weight. Let's not. Let's continue up the river here to Iverstead. Okay. Guards. Uh, just a few more hours and I can crawl under some furs. Ah. So, uh, a few more hours until uh, shift change is what you're saying. You're already bored on the job, Imperial Soldier? Come on, man. Ah, well. This is why it pays to uh, get promoted in the Imperial Legion. You get to high enough rank that following the Battle of Windhelm, you can really going on go on a nice fishing vacation, a nice fishing trip. Okay, three tugs, four tugs. Oh, Liar Tail and Thias. Excellent. As I suspected. So I need to go somewhere now that it rains quite often. I'm of course talking about Morfall. I don't know if they consider this to be, uh... Nah, they probably consider this to be cold waters. But at the same time, I always seem... It always seems to rain at some point or other up here. Um, whether that actually holds true or not, however, that is a that is an entirely different story. Now, I don't know if, if you need any alchemy supplies, I do my best to provide them. I don't know if Morthal itself has a fishing location within it, but there was that one that we went to for the fishing competition, which was back here a ways. Oh, and I'm gonna go ahead and quick save here just in case uh, anything bad happens out here. I mean, last time I went to this fishing location, I was accosted by bandits who tried to take advantage of me. I don't want that to happen again. Now, if there, yeah, if there are any mud crabs or bears or anything like that, ah, uh, yeah. Okay. I hope I'm heading in the right direction for this fishing location. I might be misremembering. Oh, there's a mud crab over there. Okay. Hmm. Me 
mean it was over this way. Yeah. Yeah, it was. There it is. That's that's the fishing location over there. See, I knew I was going in the right general direction. Oh wait, no, it's just Swamp Fungal Pod. Never mind. Got my hopes up over nothing. I mean, that's not to say that Swamp Fungal Pod is nothing. It's not. Oh, but this is the right place to be, because those ruins up there, the fishing location that the fishing challenge was to be held at, was was near those ruins. So I'm I'm in the right place. Now, I just have to find the location. I probably ran by it. I am not the most perceptive individual. I know I've said that on the past, and I will, and I will continue to say that. I will full and freely, I will fully and freely admit that I am not the most perceptive individual. So, in finding a fishing location, well, uh, it might take a little bit of time. So, like I said, I I know it was it was near this ruin. Oh, but it was on the other side of this hill. I remember because I ran over the hill back towards it from the fishing location when, from the fishing location when the bandits were chasing me which means the location itself oh. and this is why I quick saved because of these things oh oh no Oh, this is bad. Fortify health. Uh, minor healing, which we picked up from Lost Knife Hideout. Restore health. Yeah, so, apparently... Oh, yeah. Oh. Oh, ho, ho, ho. Okay. It turns out, bandits do actually respawn at this place. That is good to know. It is also snowing. I don't know if that counts as rain as well. I don't think it does. I don't think we get that fortunate, but... Oh, well. No, I was really not expecting bandits. I should have expected it, but... I was dumb. I went in blindly, and there are bandit marauders there. who have taken, like, no damage, are both spellcasters, which means that they can readily heal themselves. They have very large health pools. You know what? I'm going to get far enough away from them that I can fast travel somewhere else, because this doesn't seem like it's worth it very much. Unless... Let me consult my books here. Um... She mapped the pale. Am I in the pale? Hill march. It's that. East march. That's with wind helm and that sort of thing. Uh, the reach is where Markarth is. The rift is where Riften is, and White Run obviously is White Run. So I believe the pale is where I would need to be. So let's let's take a look here. Unless the pale is something. Oh no 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 no! The pale is uh, where Winterhold is, because it's that's showing Bronzewater Cave on it. Um, I suppose I could go a little bit west of Morthal here and see. I guess see what there is to see, fishing-wise. Might get lucky and stumble upon a location. Be good with that. And there's a road right here, so it makes it a little bit easier. 
pick some snowberries along the way, you know, for munching on or for potions later. Really? Why are orcs always picking a fight with Felix? I don't understand Oosh. it. Ah. To the moon! Oh, 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 no. Oh, that was a real backbreaker, that one was. Missed it. Oh, got a little healing buff on him. Oh, gonna cry now. Enough. Landed a blow, but I don't think it was going I don't think that's enough. Nope. It's not. Some gold, a couple potions of stamina. He's got some meat on him. I'll take the skooma. Surly Brothers Wine. Oh, that's not something you see very often. I will go ahead and take that. I feel kind of bad about that one, but at the same time, he was trying to cause Felix here bodily harm. He was rushing at him, showed no signs of relenting. It was self-defense. Okay, and then, and now with this, along here, there are mud crabs that can fill some soul gems with. Get a nice little cinematic shot there. There we go. Oh, oh, whoo. Just went flying. Ooh. There it is. It's like, I've seen, I've seen the little ripples of water. I'm like, I know the arrow's here somewhere. And sure, I've got nearly 1,200 of them. But, I mean, I, I like to get him back when I can. More mud crabs here. They think they're stealthy. Well, it looks like they took a wolf out. That's fun. Oop. Oh, I've been spotted. Which is fine. I'm not worried. Thank you for filling my soul gem. I'll take one of the chitin. And yeah, nothing there. Let's keep going. Oh. Tell me you saw that. Something just dropped from the sky. It was in full free fall. That is... I want to see what that was, that went flying that badly. I really do, I am curious about that. Someone or something just dropped down from space into the middle of Skyrim. And I'm not sure if they bounced, oh no, that's a dragon over there, please no. not something I want to deal with. Ooh, there's a wolf. It might have been another wolf or something like that. Okay, quick save. I don't know if I'm going to be able to see with the tall grass here, however. Makes it really hard for uh, distinguishing shapes. That, especially the ones that may have fallen from the sky, unless it was farther up and or it fell through the map, which is which is entirely possible. But <laughs> that's just a hilarious glitch to see. Oh, and it's also raining. It is raining. This is not excellent. Not excellent. That is. Of course, the dragon had to come and ruin us. Somebody help! 
I'm going to go ahead and switch to the other bow here. Just so we're not using the charge on on the bow that has um, soul trap on it because that's not going to do us any good. Okay, there's the dragon there. Um, okay. If you remember Gone Fishing Part 4, when we got munched on and thrown by a dragon. Yeah, no, this is much worse. This place literally provides no protection from a dragon breath attack. I'm just using all the potions here, aren't I? Oh! Oh, but there's a bandit camp over there that the dragon is getting close to. That's good news for me. Because maybe the bandits can help me take this dragon out. Yeah. I like that idea. I like that a lot. Just hope the dragon doesn't get cheeky with anything. I missed with that arrow. I'm not sure where that one landed, either. I think, I'm pretty sure I overshot that. Cause it's really hard sometimes to tell what the arrow drop is going to be. Now if only the dragon would land near there instead of doing flybys. Ooh! I hit it. I, I did hit it in there. Can confirm I hit it with an arrow at long range. Because I saw the health bar pop up on it. Okay, yep, they're definitely doing a little bit of damage. It's almost negligible damage, but it's something at least, right? Oh, and just when I thought it was going to be, you know, just a simple jaunt up the creek towards, you know, a place where I could catch the last legendary fish. A dragon always has to show up on me. I really do have a way of tracking this, don't I? Uh, in episode 21 of the playthrough, there were like three or four different dragon encounters that I had. Just I mean, that was, part of that was because we were, I was traveling to so many different forts and that sort of thing to clear them out in so many different regions, but still, the dragon's just going to keep doing flybys and that, which isn't great for me. It means I can't hit it with arrows or get sneak attack or anything like that. The dragon is just being petty, is what it's being. Now that's a good spot for it to be right there. Because I think I did hit it with an arrow there, potentially. But I didn't get sneak attack on it, because dragons are very perceptive creatures. Like, take my perceptive ability and multiply it by about 7. Because I'm terrible as it is already, and then dragons are very intelligent, crafty creatures. You know, and smell and that sort of thing. Okay. I did hit the dragon with an arrow, I think. I saw a little bit of health come off of the dragon there. Oh, boy. I definitely hit it there. Every little bit counts. Yep. Just have to have a little patience. Hopefully the rain doesn't wear off by the time this dragon battle is done, because... Uh, well... There's something I need to do while I'm here. And that is catch a legendary fish in the rain. At least I think that's how it works. Because I don't think it was 
yeah, when I caught the anglerfish, plural, you know, the three different anglerfish at Windhelm, I don't believe it was raining. That's probably even going... Yeah, those arrows are probably just even going past render distance. I missed those. But I'm glad to see the dragon is harrying those bandits. I, that is good. That's good for me. Well, yes and no. Yeah, no, those aren't those aren't connecting. Not at all. Like, I, I shoot them over there in the hopes that they're just going to arc over and hit the, the height of the dragon, but I ought to know better than that. Okay. Oh, here it comes. And it stands still here. There it is. Okay. I'm going to see if I can get a little bit closer here up against these rocks. You know, maybe have a closer vantage point to this dragon. As long as it doesn't see me, it should be fine. Come back here. Yep. Welcome to Robber's Gorge. Bandit outpost here in... Where are we, even? Uh, I guess we're in, yeah. The, the no sign of him. One of the holes. We're in the same hole that Morphal is in. Put it that way. Sometimes I have a hard time keeping the whole, keeping the hold names, or keeping track of the hold names. Also, that was sneak attack damage on that. I am glad to have gotten that. Also, it's saying to Robber's Cove. There is literally a cave underneath here. Oh. Okay, so the dragon, it appears, is going after mud crab as well. Which, for all intents and purposes, that's fine. They're going to do negligible damage, but at least they're going to make it land and give it a bad day. You know, if, this, if the dragon does enough damage to Robber's Gorge, I might as well... I might as well... raid it. Like... Because I'm only hearing the bandit chief, which almost tells me that the dragon... It, it tells me maybe the dragon destroyed all of the other bandit sacks. Or is in the process of doing so. Oh. It's getting very close to having spotted me there. That's worrying. Okay, definitely a magic user. I can see because that's the uh, remnants of frost magic there. Yep, I'm seeing the ice spikes up from there. Critical. Nice. Okay, yeah. There's still a lot of bandits in there, so maybe we won't go after Robber's Gorge today. Ooh, it did a full flyby there. Almost spotted me again. Ooh, this is tense. This is intense. Oh, man, it's just freaking havoc. It's just, oop, it took an ice spike and just shrugged it off. It's good to know that their uh, magical users can 
hit moving targets. I'm sure that's something they teach at Academy, right? I love a good fight. <sighs> Missed it. Ooh, it took one to the snout. Look at that. Ooh. Oh no. I've been detected. This is bad. Time for Potion of Invisibility. If there was any time to use it, now would be, would be that time. Just so, you know, just so I can lose the dragon and not lose the battle that thing. And I could have attacked it, but it would have made the invisibility wear off. That's kind of the way it works in this, where if you do anything like attack or interact with somebody, you lose the invisibility. Which is a shame. That's all you've got. I wouldn't try to antagonize the dragon if I were you. Okay. Invisibility is worn off. Missed it. Trying to see if I could hit the flapping wing there. Apparently it didn't work. Because I timed it wrong. Okay, did a little flyby, but no breath attack. I hit it in the wing. That time I hit it. I timed it correctly that time. Okay, so here's my... Oh! Okay. Okay, it's been knocked out of the sky. <laughs> Think you can take me? And that's where it crash landed. Oh yeah, I'm hitting it from here. A uh, little more arrow drop. Probably just hit the rock there too, so need to be careful of that. Sneak attack. Cool. Good. We're landing some good hits on the dragon. Oh, critical sneak attack. Yes. Like to see it. Like to see it. Ooh. Oh. Oh. Yay! Yay, now we can go fishing here, finally! Actually, Robber's Gorge would have made a good place for underground fishing as well, if I recall. Yep, so here's the dragon. 23 orcish arrows, likely from the bandits. Uh, bones and scales. I'll take... One of the bones and two of the scales. 302 gold, 11 steel arrows, and 17 iron arrows. That's a good find, and I will capture its dragon soul. Excellent. And now to get back to what we were doing. Going fishing. And because it's raining, we should have a better chance of getting what we need. Um, how is the fisherman, by the way? He didn't... They didn't get completely wrecked by the dragon, did they? Nope, they're still here, surprisingly. Wow. I'm fishing in the rain. Fishing in the rain. You know, and all that jazz. That sort of thing. Oop. Oop. Four nibbles, that's a good sign. A lyre tail and Thias. I already had that. Huh. 
Unless there's a fish that I need. Oh. Wait. 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 Spade fish. Unless the angel fish is considered a large fish that needs to be caught in the rain. So that's a possibility. It is entirely possible that that's the case. That won't be an angel fish. Yeah, it's a slaughter fish. Yeah, we're over an hour into the recording here. This has been a pretty good episode so far, you know? Gone fishing. Okay, another two nibbles. The salmon. Pretty soon I'm gonna have to dump some fish out of my inventory. You know, salmon, slaughter fish, those sorts of things. Also, isn't it ironic that the first fish that I pull out while it's raining is one of the rare ones? Oh, this isn't. Or this won't be rare. Um, I think the rarity is based upon the amount of tugs on the line before it goes into catch mode. So four means rare, at least from what I picked up. Two means common. Three means uncommon. That's my interpretation of events. I'm sticking to it. Probably. Maybe. Likely. <laughs> There's a mud crab freaking out there in the system. Oh, nice. A steel sword. Uh, I guess that's a nice pull. I, I don't know. I think we're just going to be pulling up junk here now. Which is a shame because it is raining. Yeah, we're we're just pulling up junk. Tongs and a steel sword. Okay, I'm going to drop some things here. Here, I found you these. Say not to the fishermen. And also these for what I've reached worth. And if you were wanting some fish here, well drop five slaughter fish. A uh, couple of tripod spiderfish, because I don't need them anymore. Just drop all the salmon, I don't need them. Uh, three carp, and a couple brook bass. Yeah, that worked well. <laughs> I like when you drop them, they come out of your inventory like they're frozen fish. <laughs> it's, it's, it's kind of funny. Uh... Hmm. Interesting. So... Uh, I might have to look this up, actually. Uh, an angelfish. Where do I find an angelfish? And don't you dare say the local pet shop. That's... because that's not helping. Uh, no, it... Alacree Rod and Temperate Lakes. Okay. So, I was right with the Alacree Rod, but it doesn't require... It doesn't require the rain. Like, well, I guess none of them require rain, actually. So that's interesting. Uh, looking at the map here, let's go to Half Moon Mill. It's a temperate lake. It's definitely, it's the definition of a temperate lake. Oop. Go ahead and quick save it. Now let's see if I can remember where the fishing supplies are at. Because there are fishing supplies here. Last time I was here, I was running and hiding from a dragon and I found a stash of... I, f I found a stash of materials and that sort of thing from the Saints and Seducers expansion that played through in episode 18 of the Legendary playthrough that, I, that I've been doing. Which, that was a really fun one, 
pretty difficult, not going to lie. The enemies were all high-level tanky, but got through it pretty well. I enjoyed it. It was, it was an interesting aspect to Skyrim. Um, I don't want to say too much more about it for those that haven't seen that episode and well, want to go back. Why am I just pulling up junk here? What is with this? Bucket. Yeah, now let's see if I can actually catch some fish this time around. Oh, we're getting nibbles. Two. Okay. Common fish. Abbasian longfin. Yeah. Good for fortify restoration, but not what we need. Hmm, is this a sunrise that I'm seeing or a sunset in game? Another Abbasian longfin. Um, it's probably sunset in game. Well, yeah, because I think it was during the daytime that that fight with the dragon was happening. I think that's how that went. A goldfish. Okay. Whatever. <laughs> goldfish is just such a whatever fish in this game. It's just, okay, you're a thing. That's fine. One, ah, uh, ah, uh, ah, uh, ah. Uh. Two, ah, uh, ah, uh, ah, uh, ah. Uh. Three, ah, uh, ah, uh, ah, uh, ah. Uh. Ah, juvenile mud crab. An uncommon catch. Not what I was hoping for. But it's something at least. One, two. Hey, look, I can count. Silverside perch. Another s fish from the base game of Skyrim. One, two, three. Probably another goldfish. Yeah. Goldfish are uncommon up here. Okay. Oh no, this might be sun. This is sunrise. Oh, this is glorious. Look at that. Oh, it looks so good. There are very few times that I actually stop and take the time to I admire the scenery in Skyrim. I ought to do that more. Just look at this. It looks so good. Ah, uh, now we're catching shot. A flagon. Classic. Classy. Don't need it. Yeah, so I can show you what I'm talking about with when I said I found stuff for saints and seducers here there is this uh, buried chest here which apparently has been restocked with a draft of lockpicking some gold some lockpicks and a scroll of hysteria also I heard a dragon call so I'm going to fast travel over to the guardian stone because there's another fishing location on the other end of this lake Hopefully far enough away from a dragon that the dragon won't be an issue. Now granted with this location, I have done a lot of fishing here before and have dropped a lot of the junk that I have caught here. And also, this guy, I swear, will he will continue to harass you. He'll just... I've been hunting and fishing in these parts since I was, you know, for as long as I can remember. And that, and, and things like that. And it's, it's just like, I don't, okay. Oh, wow, okay. The, the fishing field of view on that really went to skew. <laughs> which, I've been hunting and fishing in these parts. Speaking of which, have you ever, I mean, I don't know if you're those people that, you know, find it funny when, search engines and that sort of thing do something funny for a work 
like, and you probably know about the typing a skew into the search bar and searching it and, you know, having it just tilt the screen. You probably know about that. I just, I just find it interesting. Said the word askew, I had to go off on a tangent on that one. Yeah. Caught a spade fish there and then... Oh, troll skull. Really? These things are heavy. <laughs> Yeah, so... Angelfish can only be caught in temperate lakes in-game. Doesn't say weather conditions or anything like that. So... I mean, as far as I know, let me, let me take a look again. And I'm also keeping my eye on my line here. You know, for nibbles and that sort of thing. Oh! That's a four nibbler. A liar tail and Thias. I've been hunting and fishing in these parts for years. Oh, be quiet. It's not like my poaching is hurting anyone. The yarl can hardly eat every deer now, can he? Mm. Yeah, it just says Alecri fishing rod in temperate lakes. Otherwise, there is a place that you can get um, guaranteed ones. Oh gosh! I've been hunting and fishing in these okay. parts for years. Okay. Be quiet. Okay. Well. Hmm. I mean, this is considered to be a temperate lake. I mean, I know it is. I, I know it's considered it's to be a temperate like lake. It's not hurting anyone. The yarl can hardly eat every deer now, can he? Oh, I guess they do have a DNR sort of thing here, then, according to that. I've been hunting and fishing in these parts for oh, years. Stop recycling your lines, man. I already know I've been here countless times. There's enough for all of us if you aren't greedy. Juvenile mud crab. Okay. You know what? Just so we don't have to listen to that guy spout off anymore. Um. Let me continue looking. Oh. Let's see here. Searching through, searching through. Yeah, the angelfish just says only in temperate lakes. So, I think I'm just getting bad RNG overlap with another fish that can be caught in temperate lakes. It's not like my poaching is hurting anyone. Also, I want to get away from this guy because he's getting pretty annoying. Not let's, uh, why don't we follow the lake this way? Why not? We may have done this in the past before, but just out of curiosity, well, this this is considered to be uh, this is considered to be the well, Falkreath Hold, which I don't think is any of these. No, it's not. So, why don't we go to Falkreath and see if we can get a fishing map for the Falkreath area. Hey, hey. Don't fancy those clunky two-handed weapons. 
Nothing special. Take, Take a good look around. I'm sure you'll find what you're looking for. If not, let me know. I might have it stored away. Well met. Unlike my brother, I've no dislike of strangers. Met lots of them while I was a Stormcloak. How would have you got for sale? Some may call this junk. Me, I call them treasures. Okay, while we're here, we might as well peruse uh, weapons and apparel and that sort of thing, just, just to see. Necklace of Major Smithing. That might be worth it. Ooh, scaled horn armor. I think... Eh? I don't know. What What do I feel like wearing here? Vagrant robes, robes of conjuring. Um... Yeah, I'm going to go ahead and buy that, and the necklace of major smithing, and then let's see what we can sell this guy. Scroll. Oh, no, 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 no. I'm keeping that one. Oh, uh, yeah, scroll of blizzard. Let's sell it. Scroll of call to arms. Uh, let's not sell these ones. Firestorm, too much fun. Guardian circle. I'm going to keep that. Harmony, let's sell that. Hysteria, sell them. Sell one of the mass, mass paralysis ones. The other one could be funny, so let's keep it. Diamond, I can make... Ooh, but I can use that for smithing jewelry, so I'm going to keep that. The dragon items, let's go ahead and sell those. Um, What do I have gems-wise? Not as many as I thought I did. Uh, we might be getting close on what we have inventory-wise. A draft of pickpocketing, I'm going to keep that because it might be useful. <sighs> All of these potions, sadly, might be useful to some degree. But I can at least sell some of these invisibility ones. Yeah, let's leave them with 170 gold. Steal we'll actually leave this guy with no regret it. Can I Also... Get some may call Realizing this came here for a purpose, not to treasures. get sidetracked by that. Fishing map, Falkreath. A spell to him raise zombie. And then we already have sparks. The... So, that's kind of a fun spell to him to pick up, I think. Yeah, I already have healing. Probably should sell that. But now we have a fishing map for Falkreath, and it's probably going to show me what I already knew. Um, there are like five different locations on that Being lake. Good. Excellent. So we were heading Don't towards mind. a few from here. Because it says they're going to be here kind of along the road. Which, let's see what we can do with that. Might We might be... Yeah, this up this bonus content episode for Gone Fishing is probably going to be running a little bit long. Actually, it already is. But I'm I'm fine with that as long as you guys are fine with that because I do want to see what swims in deep waters is going to give us for these rare fish. I am curious. And I mean, you know, I I want to make a little bit more progress on this than just having completed um, the underground fishing with the vampire fish. Uh, a couple of giant rats on the road. Nothing to be too concerned about. They're soon going to be filling my soul gem. Yeah. Also, I want to quick save. Just as this is a still this is on legendary, so I mean it would be stupid not to, and I've made that mistake before of not doing that. Hold up. There might be a fishing location here. There's a camp. Keep your hands yeah. to yourself. 
Oh, sorry. Yeah, yeah, here's a fishing location. Excellent. Yeah. I knew that had to be a little fishing camp on the island. I saw the boat and I'm like, I don't think, I mean, there's not typically someone there, I don't think. Or I just don't uh, go to this island enough to see that sort of thing. Okay, salmon. That's fine. This is a beautiful view, and now it's a sunset. Look at that. With the throat of the world, and... Oh, just the orange hues and the clouds. It's... I like that. Oh, we have an uncommon fish here. A goldfish. In combat? No. Three dots? Hmm. Three dots. If it's saying I can't fish while in combat. Wait. There's a horse there. I am curious as to what's going on here. I'm not seeing any magic throws or... Wait. They're... The G? Or they... They're bandits. Oh! <gasps> no. Oh, no. I think there are multiple bandit chiefs here as well. Yep, there are. Wow, this horse is holding up pretty- oh! Yeah, no, this horse is holding up pretty well. I'm surprised by that. And thank you, uh, screen recording for crashing on me like that. That is fun. Sorry about the little jump there. Un unintentional on my end. I don't know why it does that sometimes. Because I have it set to where it shouldn't. Yeah, sadly this hunter did not get uh, lucky. It was very unfortunate, but we took the bandits out, claimed their gold and arrows. I don't really need any of the rest of their equipment. Wait, is the horse my enemy too? I didn't even hit the horse with an arrow though. I, I protected, I saved its life. <laughs> Why would it be mad at me? <laughs> what did I do? A whole fat lot of nothing to it. That's what I did. Okay, I'm looking for the bandit that had a bow, and I'm not seeing them. Okay, well. You know what? All's well that ends well. Yes, we had, there was a video recording crashing. You know what, maybe it reset itself to hour and a half length. Curious. Because I think the timestamp on that, well... Sorry, I'm arguing with myself, and there's another elk that's going for a swim. <laughs> Anywho, let's get back to fishing, shall we? The Italy Cree Rod. As it now turns to full nighttime with an aurora borealis, northern lights. <sighs> Immediately catch junk. A lantern. <sighs> Don't need that. The good news is, if this fishing location 
doesn't pan out. There should be one across the lake, just directly across from this, from this location, as far as I can tell. Get nibbles. It's a good sign. We got one, two. Nope. Common. A glassfish. Is a glassfish considered common? Maybe. That might might be the case. One. Two. Another glassfish or yep, another glassfish. But we're catching fish here, so there might be a chance. Might be able to catch something. Something that I want. An angelfish. I'll be singing, you know, hallelujah, when I catch it. You know, that sort of thing. I don't know if that's too high-pitched. I don't know how it sounds on the recording for that. I'll have to go back and listen to that. Or maybe drop it down an octave instead of doing hallelujah. Maybe do a hallelujah. Something like that, where it's a little more pleasing to the ears. On common fish, a juvenile mud crab. Technically not a fish, but something that you can fish for. That's uncommon. Okay, good. We're getting nipples to... And catching, it's common. The Bassian Longfin. Once again, good for alchemy, but not what I need. Two nibbles. Another common fish. Silverside Perch. Uh, another beautiful night in Skyrim. Two nibbles, and catching a Bassian Longfin. Not what I need. Catching junk now. Have to move locations. Yep. The obligatory tongs. I, I gotta go, man. I'm pulling up tongs. <laughs> it's not working out. Bye. <laughs> yep, so let's swim across the lake. I believe that might be the location right there. There's a little bit of a dock there. Uh, see a chair. And yep, there are the fishing supplies. I'm correct. Hey, who knows, maybe an angelfish is hanging out near the near this dock. That'd be nice. Be pretty nice. Three nibbles. Goldfish. Oh, random number generation. Isn't that just fun? Two nipples. Oh, common fish. Glassfish. Called glassfish because of how see-through it is and how tiny it is, how brittle it is. Okay, one nipple, two nipples. Can't really have a red nipple and a blue nipple. It's not a Dr. Seuss book. We're just catching fish here. Three nibbles. Uncommon. Goldfish. Oh, you always get my hopes up. I'm hoping for that four nibbler.
but they are called rare fish for a reason. They don't have the greatest pull rates. Unless, of course, it's a an, an angler fish, which should not have caught like three of them in a row near Windhelm, but I did. Like, that's insane. I don't I don't know how that happens. Hello, slaughterfish. Aren't you an ugly fish? I mean, I'm glad I could keep the water safe by getting one more slaughterfish out of the waters because you feast on people's legs like you're a piranha. You chew on them like they're beef jerky. It's ridiculous. It's uncalled for. Also, I pulled up tongs again. I'm going to try fishing one more time here, and if it's not a fish, then I'm going to have to move locations again. I think I'm just catching junk here, yeah. Ooh, an orcish helmet, though. I can certainly sell that. <laughs> Yeah, worth 500 gold normally, and it's heavy armor. Okay. Um, let's consult the map that I bought. Falkreath. Yeah. Okay. There will be another fishing location up towards this corner of the lake. So let's go ahead and fast travel to Half Moon Mill. And make sure to quick save, of course. Why, why is that a quick save better in bonus content than I do with actual episodes? What is this? <sighs> it's just poor planning on my part. I think that's what it is. Something along those lines. Let's go ahead and make our way up to this corner of the... Yep, see, this, this is why catching slaughterfish is a good thing, because you're getting them out of the waterways, because there's one coming after me right now! Don't nibble on my ankles! <sighs> good. Another fishing camp. Somebody help. Somebody help. Yes, I know, it's a slaughterfish. Oh! Right. And also, I hear a dragon. Someone do something! I will see what I can do. Yeah, because I, I can't fish when I'm in combat, sadly. Okay, here it comes, out of the depths. Help. That was, that was a pitiful help, lady. I have heard better cries for help in my time. No, oh, and there are the fishing supplies. There they are. But yeah, no, you don't just say, Hell. You know? There's got to be more emphasis on it. <laughs> Definitely got its attention. Whoosh! Oh, I think the shout finished it. <gasps> oh, oh, you jerk of a fish. You're still... What? How much health does a slaughterfish have? I hit it directly with an arrow. Well, I shouted at it, then hit it with an arrow directly. Oh, underwater snipe with a cinematic. Yes. <laughs> now that's content. <laughs> I like that. <laughs> Don't you just love it when a plan comes together? Yeah, it did bite me a little bit, but that's fine. That's okay. It only nipped my ankles a little bit. I'm fine. I'll walk it off. I'm good. I am good. Okay, maybe we can catch an angelfish up here. That's the hope. 
Two bites. Nope. A brook bass. Well, good thing night fishing is not illegal in Skyrim. Because that's literally what we're doing. Night fishing. One nibble. Two nibbles. Ah, it's common fish. Glass fish, yeah. Del a delicate little fish, but not the one I need. Another common fish. A Bastion longfin. Ah, boy. Fishing in temperate lakes. I feel like this is definitely, well, this is definitely going to be the hardest rare fish to get, I think. For some odd reason. Ah, it's an uncommon goldfish. Yeah. Uh, I have a lot of goldfish up to this point. It's ridiculous. Okay, nibble there, nibble there, it's a common fish, last fish, come on, work with me Skyrim, work with me, come on, I just need an angel fish. Because I, have, I haven't been to the location that you can get them um, just as they're swimming around. Because that's in one of the DLCs. Uh, it's in the Dawnguard DLC. Yeah, no, I I don't want to do that, though, because I don't... It's not time to delve into the DLC yet. <laughs> There's so much more to see and want to level up a little bit before doing that, because... I mean... Well, the, the Dragonborn DLC is definitely, like, endgame stats, and we're playing on Legendary. We're not at endgame stats yet. Not by any means. Sure, we defeated Alduin, and sure, we did the Civil War in Skyrim. But, no, we... Those are, like, level 50 quests up there. Let, let's be honest. Um... So sadly, I'm going to have to fast travel now and see if it'll still have me catching junk here or if it's going to actually um, yield something beneficial like an angelfish. Okay, there are definitely nibbles, so there are definitely fish down here. A river betty. Okay. Yeah, who knew fishing in temperate lakes could be so difficult when you're fishing for one certain fish? Also, when I was looking this up... Ooh, still cuffed boots, okay. Yeah, sorry, I just got distracted there. When I was looking this up, I'm like, wait, that says to use bait. What am I looking at? It was something I've for the Sims that had snuck years. in there in, in the Skyrim list because it was fishing. I'm like, okay, really? It's not what I was looking for, but thanks. You tried. It's not like my poaching is hurting anyone. <sighs> well, Y'all can hardly eat every deer now, can he? Yeah, this guy, this this guy has the same two I've been hunting and fishing lines in these of parts dialogue. For years. There's enough for all of us if you want. Okay, three. three. Yeah, I'm just catching it's a lot of common fish now. Hurting oh. anyone? The yaw can hardly eat every deer now, can he? I've been hunting and fishing in these parts for years. Oh, dude, just stop saying things. 
Like, props to the voice actor who played this guy, but seriously, every time you're in proximity to him, like, he'll walk into your proximity and just go, I've been hunting and fishing in these parts for years. Or, it's not like my potion is hurting anyone. It's not like the Jarl can eat all the deer and hold. You know, stuff like that. It's... Just want to fish in peace here. Just trying to get a certain type of fish and not have to deal with being interrupted by fishermen like you. Go take an arrow to the knee. You know? Anything but harassing me while I'm fishing. Ah, uh, hissed carp. Alright. I've been hunting and fishing in these parts for years. Oh, now he's going to do that like thing where he glitches in front of me, isn't he? The Yarl can hardly eat every deer now, can he? That is a very dangerous place to be. You wouldn't want to get hit by the hook. Or if I get something heavy on the line. I've been hunting and fishing in these parts for years. I mean, that's my choice to move. Three nibbles. It's gonna be a goldfish. Juvenile mud crab, it's never not mind. Like my poaching is hurting anyone. The yarl can hardly eat every deer now, can he? Somebody really needed to give this guy more voice lines, you There's know. For all of us, if you aren't greedy. I mean, not. Don't have him spill his entire life story, but. I've been hunting and fishing in these parts for years. It's not like my poaching is hurting anyone. The Yarl can hardly eat every deer now, can he? I'm going to move fishing locations. Yeah, we're, we're just catching junk us. now. Bucket. You aren't greedy. <sighs> well, I'm not greedy. But I don't want to deal with you either. Oh, there's a dragon nearby. Oh, that's never a good sign. Detected. I hope it's just the chickens that have detected me. Just us chickens here. That's all. Good, we're getting nibbles. Yeah, two nibbler. Uh, a Bastion Longfin. How hard can it be to get one stinking angelfish around here? I, I got three stinking anglers, one stinking scorpion fish, two stinking of the other that I can't remember the name of for some reason. Three nibbles, it's an uncommon. Juvenile mud crab. And so many other stinking fish just sitting in my pocket here. They're just stinking up a storm. They're just wreaking havoc. Or just reeking. It's just. Ugh. Like, it smells like a whole load of fish. Which is to be expected, but I mean, they're just. Ugh. It's a lot of them. And not the one I need. That's gonna smell glorious. But no, the others just smell like fish. Fish that I already have. Old fish, stale fish, and still cuff boots gun. Ah, oh, wow. 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 Sploosh. Okay. 
one nibble, two nibbles, three nibbles, and juvenile mud crab. Yeah, it's like one pause and then two nibbles. I need it. To, I need this to be something that's four nibbles, just nibble, 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 nibble. You know. That's common fish, and a Bassian longfin. I have so many of those now. Hey, would you mind giving me a Cyrodiilic spit tail then, so I can make a uh, fortify restoration potion? Nope, another a Bassian longfin. You know, if I hope for anything else other than an angelfish, then it might give me an angelfish, right? Is that how these things usually work? You hope for one thing that's not what you want, and then you suddenly get what you want. <sighs> Empty wine bottle. I'm going to cast it one more time here, and if I pull up another piece of junk, I'm moving locations again. I'm thinking back to uh, near Riften, because that is a lake, all things considered. <sighs> Okay, we caught junk, we're heading back to Riften. The obligatory tongs. Disgusting. And I can hear a dragon, so, you know. I'd rather not deal with the dragon as well. Yeah. So, like I said, this is going to be a bit of a longer episode. Heck, it might be an extremely long bonus content episode, You're a stranger. but I am determined and I have the time to be able to do this as long as, R as, long as the RNG doesn't continue to be too bad. You know, if, if I can catch an angelfish, that will mean an end to this quest line, potentially. Please help me. I'm going to lose my job at the Ripton Fishery. I just need to pull up an angelfish. That's all I need. And if I did have an angelfish on me earlier in the playthrough, like I said I did earlier in the recording, I'd be kicking myself. Oh, there's the Cyrodiilic Spade Tail, by the way. So I can make a Fortify Restoration Potion based upon that. That's nice. At least something worked out. common fish. Another Cyrodiilic Spade Tail. That's two potions of Fortify Restoration. And, of course, I'm not doing the Fortify Restoration glitch, as I have the unofficial uh, Skyrim Special Edition patch. USSEP, I believe, is what the acronym on that is. I don't acronym well, so if I somehow got that correct... I'll be genuinely surprised. Okay, we're just pulling up junk, so I'm going to move to the other fishing location here down at Riften. right here. Now watch, if I do catch a rare fish, it's going to be one of the ones that I have already. That would be really ironic. And moronic. Ironic and moronic. Oh hey, we're at three potential Fortify Restoration potions. Maybe more based upon earlier fishing. Two nibbles, and immediately on slaughterfish. Okay, whatever. Just making waterways safer again. That's what I do. You're welcome, for what it's worth.
Three nibbles. Four nibbles! Angelfish! Yes! We did it! Yes! Oh, it's glorious! Hallelujah! 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 We caught an angelfish! Caught an angelfish! We caught it! We caught it! We caught an angelfish! Okay, I'm gonna stop singing now. I think I was getting slightly off key there, but you know, m hope I got the message across there. Excuse me. Need something? It wasn't easy, but here are the fish you asked for. You are like my brood to me. Here, my token. Are there any more fishing challenges you can give You've me? You've already learned all I can teach you. Excellent. Thank you. I'm looking for work. I understand. It's all in this note. Rubbish retrieval. Cleaning our waterways. <laughs> Well, first, let's take a look at this item that he gave me. Um, the Fang of Henkentakt. 26 damage, and target takes 25%, or 25 points of shock damage as well. Wait, this is a dagger, and it does this. Just be patient, Ant. She'll have it, I promise. That's insane for a dagger. It's a dagger with the same damage output, roughly, as the blade sword that weighs a whole lot more. And has a shock damage enchantment. <laughs> oh, that's so good. Oh, I'm so glad I made this a longer episode. That was worth it. Fishing work, by the way. Uh, no, that's not it. Um, let's see. Uh, let's see. Nope, it's not a fishing contest. Okay, where is it? got to be in here somewhere, right? Oh, bounty. Cleaning our waterways. Bounty. Cleaning our waterways. By, by order of Jarl Ignant. Some have taken to using the water that runs through Markarth as a place to dispose of empty bottles, worn boots, and other unwanted things. Not only is this unsightly, it poses a danger to our citizens. Sadly, we do not have the men to spare to clean up this mess. Any who can fish up at least five pieces of trash from Markarth's waters shall be rewarded. Help us keep our city safe and clean for everyone. Okay. Okay. Rubbish retrieval. I mean, I'm going to have to end the episode here, but that's something we can look forward to. Next, Gone Fishing. Hey, I was already making waterways clean, getting rid, you know, getting slaughter fish out of there. Apparently somebody caught on to that. They want me to help them in Mark Hearth and maybe earn a little gold from it in the process. Well worth it. Still don't have the dwarven fishing rod, but we'll get there eventually. You know, I hope you guys enjoyed this. If you liked what you saw, if you liked what you've been watching, you want to see more of it, don't forget to like, subscribe. Leave a comment as to what quests you want me to do in the playthrough series, and other things such as that. I'm s this I just have so much fun when I play Skyrim. And I know it can be a little bit of an RNG nightmare with this fishing, but sometimes the rewards are well worth it. Well, this is the Nerdy Librarian signing off for the night. Have a good night, everybody. I will see you in the next one. Thank you for watching.